Lloyd Vehicle Consulting, not sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Pinley Maggot Chippy, Pinley Maggot Chippy, Pinley Maggot Chippy, Pinley Maggot Chippy. Oh, I'm so sorry, viewers. Looks like I've been uh, influenced by some stupid viral videos on the internet after <laughs> visiting a certain restaurant in Coventry last night. So we're on our way to the uh, NEC Classic Motor Show, sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. And uh, first thing we're going to do is walk from the hotel to Coventry Station. And this isn't the Jeff Marshall channel, so I won't be going into too much detail because you're here to see cars and not public transport. But uh, we might take some little footage whilst we're there. Right, viewers, so today is the 11th of November. And uh, we're going to buy ourselves a uh, return ticket to Birmingham International. So this is a slightly shambolic shuffle. We might get things wrong, we might fall over, we might get interrupted by announcements, we might get interrupted by people who recognise me. It might be terrible, but we're going to see if we can do all of the NEC, which is probably going to be about 18 to 20 half hour parts. If you're not up for that, viewers, and you want me to talk about diesels, then I suggest you turn the video off now. The rest of you, we're going to have some fun. Lloyd Vehicle Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. Okay, viewers, we're going to break ourselves in gently by not doing one first because that will be the whole day if I start there. So we're going to go the hall two. Just been having a nice conversation with one of my friends about ADO 16s. Um, they are somewhere around, but uh, I'm going to try to, have to walk past all these very tempting food stands. And uh, first of all, come to the Citroen Car Club. There is actually a car in this hall that I've filmed on my channel quite recently. It's not on this stand though. Um, when we get there, see if you can guess what it is. But straight away, we've got a nice SM here. Uh, this one's an L, so it is um, 72, 73. Is this an American market one or something? The fixed headlamps. It probably isn't actually, because it's got the uh, cover. If I could, oh no, it is. Look, 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 there's my finger there. This would be an American market one then, with like that. We'll have a look at the speedo. We'll see if it's in miles an hour. That'll be a dead giveaway. Ooh, you know, I can't really see. I think that's in miles an hour. But yes, power steering and all kinds of things and Maserati developed engine and all kinds of other typical weirdness. I do apologise to you if there's lots of people here. I'm afraid it's just the way that it goes. This isn't I drive a classic or twin cam here. Um, you get to see everything. Um, it's not edited down, you know, those are very good videos, but um, that's not the way we do things on this channel. 1984 Citroen BX16 TRS, a, a pre-facelift one, it's a, quite an early one actually, I think the UK cars came out in 1983, so really quite an early one. Pray we can't talk about this one, dude, because it has a, a forbidden fuel engine in it, but we probably can talk about this, uh, this Safari here. Um, these didn't come with a bit of fuel engine, as far as I know. It's a 74 uh, Deas, it's a Deas 23 Safari. Uh, Ports of Area registration on this one. It's quite a late one, I think 75 was the last year for these, from what I, from what I know. Have a look at the interior, someone's very kind of left the uh, window open. That's very nice, isn't it? Look at those seats, quite different from the earlier cars in terms of the seats. Um, quite expensive cars, they're very, very big, these. That is, um, it's rather nice. So this is BL Classic Cars, there's quite a few trade stands around here. Uh, £115,000, a Series 2 uh, drophead coupe from 1970. 
look up for some beige leather interiors for you, but, but this green one will do as a nice start. That is very nice. I love this colour. On, um, on camera, it looks a little bit lighter than it actually is in real life. It's sort of British Racing Green. British Racing Green, as uh, it was in the 30s when it was a sort of colour on racing cars, was almost black. And actually, this is quite close to that, which is very nice. Ooh, 1977 Mazamati Virak SS. I hope this is a real SS, viewers. It better be for £82,500. We know what happens with cars that are not um, real uh, SSs, don't we? It's a reference from, from many, many years ago. Nice XK150. The chap I was talking to about ADA 16, they're on my friend, he's actually got an XK150. Um, it's in the process of just being recommissioned at the moment. Um, maybe he'll let me have a go in that at some point. What's going on here? That's, that's not a 1972 Jaguar E-Type Series 3 VTOL Roadster. That's, a, that's an A35 van from 1967. I don't know what's going on around here, viewers, but uh, never mind. I think they made these until 1968 when they replaced them with a um, Austin badge version of what some people call Morris Minor van, but was marketed as the I think the 600 weight van or O type. Ooh, lunches! I've just been watching a video from the Grand Thrift Auto channel about Lancia Betas, and maybe some of them that were in that video are actually here. We've certainly got various types. I do like this uh, Beta Coupe, and look, viewers, a lime green interior. Ooh. This one is on on an R, so it's 76, 77. This is 1600. I don't think they have the 1.3s in the coupes. I might be wrong about that. So you left me the information sheet quite handily. Ooh. Okay, so it, it's actually both um, registered 77 and made 76. Very nice. Quite a late one. This is actually, I thought the, this, all the um, late betas in this country would beta Trevis, but, but this, they're not. So it says a, it's a beta saloon. Is that a beige leather interior, viewers? Mm, do you like a nice beige leather interior? Yes, yeah, so they're very late on a, on a Y plate. Let's see if there's an information sheet here. Uh, it's, oh, there we go. Um, it's an 83, so it's very late. There's, yeah, there's a coverage on that iPad from the beta anniversary weekend of September, which uh, was filmed by Grand Thrift Auto. Oh, uh, not announcements, viewers. Okay, so there'll be a two-minute silence um, in a, a few minutes, so we better keep going. So this is a beta HPE. It's a Volumex model. It's quite a late one, actually. I think they finished around 85. This is a B, so it's right at the end. Uh, let's just see here. It's a, so this is an 83, so it must have been registered in 84. Um, so the HP was ready until 84, so yeah, very late one. This would have been one of the last ones then. And it has the supercharged engine. Ooh, is this another beta volume? So I, I was looking for a beta hi-fi. Um, that was kind of developed by Tickford, but I don't think one of those is here. Wow, so, okay, so it's a January 85, so it's a very, very late one. It's even later than another one. I like these LO wheels, it's the fact that I <laughs> don't know which one of these I prefer. I think probably the HPE, but that's very nice as well. So, uh, Beta Monte Carlo, I, I think actually they were just bad as Monte Carlo in some ways. There it is in a magazine appearance. So this is the, an earlier one um, with the brake servo. Later ones did not have the brake servo. So, yeah, it's a 76. Um, it's like a sort of press car. So registered 77, but made 76. And so there's the engine in the back. Oh, and the roof's open as well, we can take a look. Yeah, I, I quite like these views, I have to say. We're, we are a sort of lunch friendly channel. 
which is a shame I've only ever kind of really driven one Lancia in my life. I hopefully I'd rectify that at some point. Ooh, an HF Integrale. This actually might be an Evo 2. It's a very late one on an L. I think we finished in 1994. So it's a very late one. Left hand drive, of course, they all they all were by this stage. Yes, it is an Evo 2. I've seen them actually even later than this, but I think production finished in 94. Look at that blue interior. Very, very blue. And my fingers as well. What earth is this? Obviously, little people are crowding around it. This is a concept car, isn't it? I can't remember what this is called. I'll have to go and have a look at the information board, actually, over there. We'll have a look at that in a second. Oh, a Fulvia. Is this a Series 1 or a Series 2? This looks like it's... Um, yeah, it's a Series 1, it's a 69 on an H. Um, it's 1.3 Rally S, complete with no bumpers, because that's the way that they came. Uh, this one is an import. It wouldn't have a really tiny plate like that, and left-hand left drive it wasn't. Ooh, another magnificent Lancia, an Aurelia Coupe. Very nice. What year is this one? Um, it's 1954. At this stage, um, again from the Grand Fifth Auto Channel information, because he loves glanches on there. Um, and owns a Gamma, I think, uh, Mr. Charles does. Um, some, sometimes they were right hand drive even in Italy at that stage. Ooh, a Flavia, 63. Very nice views. That's a very stylish car, isn't it? And. I've just spotted a beige leather interior. Mmm. With wood. Because I do like a nice beige leather interior. Gosh. Amazing having a two minute silence in a building with sort of tens of thousands of people in it and they all clapped at the end. Gosh, none of us would be here if they're. Those men and women hadn't sacrificed themselves for us. Anyway, this uh, reminds me of that Pink Panther car from the old TV series. But of course, it's not the Pink Panther car. It's a 1970 Lancia Stratos Zero, and there's absolutely no rear visibility at all. You get in through there, and the way you see out is through that mirror on the roof. Not the most practical car, then. That steering wheel also looks very bulbous. You can't really see, the reflection's quite bad, but the steering wheel is really sort of bulbous looking. That's um, interesting. How on earth do they get that in here? <laughs> wow. Right, viewers. Well, uh, <laughs> look at this. There's a car I filmed on the channel, there's another one, two. I think there's a, there's a third one I filmed on the channel on this very stand, but which one is it going to be? Uh, it's not this Fiat 126, that's for sure. Interesting sort of colour scheme on this. Um, on a Y, so 82, 83. Ooh, look at that, viewers. A Fiat Argenta. I'm very excited when I see Fiat Argentas views. I don't know what it is about them, but it makes me very excited. So someone's um, got the engine about to be tuned by Abarth. Not the original then in that case. Fiat 128, I think this is. Yes, it is. It's a relatively late one. The early ones didn't have these enormous rear lights. Uh, so. On an R, so 76, 77. And there we go. Oh, it's 77. There's uh, some early photographs of it there. Excellent. It was in the family for a long time. This looks like a Sayat Marbella, though. I think this is a Marbella. Yeah, it will be with the things here. It's a sale, but it's a dead giveaway. 1990-91, um, based on a Marbella, but I think this is actually an Inca, um, because that was a van version. 
Uh, sorry, terror. I do apologise. The Inca was later. This is a terror. Uh, Panda terror. Look at that. Very rare version of a very rare car. See, my bears are rare enough, let alone the terrors. 4x4 four four Panda here. 88, 89 registration. 5 speed gearbox. But it looks uh, pretty interesting, doesn't it? Fiat 500e. I've actually uh, filmed one of these on my channel. Filmed it actually last last year. Um, on slightly shambolic SMM TVs, we had a go in one of these. Mr. Bill from Fuel Power and I, who is much more of a Fiat enthusiast than I am. Ooh, a Topolino. 1937 Fiat Topolino, registered in Britain in March 37. Wow. I'm not sure if that's a lever or what it is, but let's be a bit cautious. I'm not really sure I'm going to fit in the back there, Theo. I don't think that's going to work very well for me. Oh yes, this is an incredibly old Fiat. It's UK registered in 1899. So this is the oldest vehicle in the club. <laughs> it's <laughs> literally, the, they say that the club is from any Fiat from 1899, and this is the oldest Fiat in the world. This isn't, no, this is a uh, Strada. It's a pre-facelift Strada. There were two facelifts for it, and this is before either of them. Um, 1982 Strada 105 TC. I do hope to get a Strada on the channel properly at some point. I was going to film one um, from the collection of Mr. Bushby just over there um, back last month, but unfortunately um, it wouldn't start, so we couldn't film it. Uh, hopefully that will be uh, sorted out at some point. That's very nice. That's very nice. And there is Mr. Bushby in the background. Hello, Mr. Bushby. Hello, sir. Um, doesn't look like the, doesn't look like the uh, car that I filmed, which I thought was going to be on the stand, is here. But instead, we've got this really rather nice W registration Fiat 132 Klimatats Klimatizata. Oh, and it's fuel injected as well. Very exciting. Optional air conditioning. Yeah, we definitely need that, don't we? we need air conditioning. Uh, so this is before it became the Argentas. It's quite, quite a late 132. I think the Argenta came along in 1981. So this is an 81. So it's very, it's very, very late one. And uh, yes, very nice it is. So is this, it's a Pinna Farina um, 124 Spider. Because the late ones like this were not badged as Fiat's. They were badged as Pinna Farina. Rather like the... Um, Fiat X19 to Badger's Batones. Um, we'll have a look at one of those in a moment. So this must be, uh, yeah, a very late one. It'd be sort of 83, 84, something like that. Left hand drive, of course, because most of them actually were by this stage. And it's got the two litre uh, fuel injected engine. Ooh, is that a biscuit interior view or a beige one? <laughs> My camera thinks it's different in different lights, so I don't know. Um, so this one. Doesn't actually say that. Oh, there we go. It's a, it's um, it's an '84 because it was made late '83 for the '84 model year. Oh, here we go. So yeah, there we go. It's the Batoni X19. This one. It's quite a late one on a D. Maybe the information sheet will tell me exactly what year this is. But I have seen a Grand Finale one of these, and that was the sort of last one built of the last type built. So it's an 86. This will have the uh, 1.5 engine in it. The earlier ones were a 1.3, as far as I remember. So here is an earlier one. I, I recognise this. I think this possibly might have been on the Seabrook's channel, but I can't 100% remember. So this is an 83. Okay, so this is also a 1.5. The car had been in production for quite a long time by this stage. I think they came out in 1972, so quite a modern design for the time, and one that lasted far longer, I imagine, than they wanted uh, it to, but they kept building it. 
It's got Abarth wheels on it. As featured on Car SOS, okay. So this is another Batone one. It's got the Northern Iron plates on it, so I don't exactly know what year this is, but it'll be after, say, 84. I wouldn't like to say exactly, because I might get that wrong. Like so many other things um, that I make mistakes on, on this channel. Right. Let's uh, move over to the De Chevaux Club. Have a look. I don't really know much about these cars, to be honest with you. So this isn't Ian Seabrook's channel. Um, you know, obviously, you can... Uh, Watch his video with that if you want to know more than I know about these. This looks like a Meagri. So you're trying to get people from actually sitting in it. There's nothing to this, is there? There's just nothing to it at all. I didn't realize they made them as early as this. This is a 67, 68 plate. I thought they made them a little bit later than that, but could be wrong. So I don't really know much about these. This one, a 70, 71 on a J. Oh yes, this is the uh, 6, which means, I think that means it has the 602cc engine. Let's see how much I know, which is nothing. Ooh, a Tehalt Gara. Quite late on in the sort of 2 cv years. Those Peugeot 205 rear lights? I imagine they probably are. I think I've seen one of these before. The registration suggests that it was important to this country in uh, 2018, the same year that um, me and Seabrook's Dacia was imported. That's also, I think it's G501 ATL, and this is G780 ATL. ATL. There we go. Yes, it's a. Uh, doesn't even say what the year this is, but this is the sort of just me RE. Uh, this is, yes, yeah, a Lomax. There's one, actually one of these in the uh, local club that I belong to in Hampshire. That's very motion enthusiast on a key plate. Let's see if it says what year this is. Uh, a later version, it doesn't it can say. But yeah, it, it looks a bit like a Morgan three-wheeler, but it's based on some sort of 2CV mechanicals. And there's more than one three-wheeler based on 2CV mechanicals out there, actually. This is not the only one. Another Lomax here, let me not trip over anything, be careful, I don't trip over things here. It's very careful, just walk around. Yeah, there we go. There we go. What on earth is this? 2C feet max? Wow, this is one of the first kits produced. Unfortunately the kit is no longer available. Um, those door handles, well, they look very familiar. I <laughs> wonder what those are off. Yes. <laughs> Goodness me. Um, I presume that that registration is from the donor car as opposed to when this was made. The first ones were made in the 1990s and that's an 8081 plate. Um, very, very interesting drawing position. <laughs> Nothing on the floor all the way to there. That's really, really strange. Goodness me. Um, exciting. Another De Cheval here. 77, 78 registration. I forget the name of, of, of these, uh, these vans. Was this the, the early ones are called the Azul, but I think it's, a lot of these were called something different. Um, yeah, when they went to the sort of Diane based one, but like, I forget the name of that. Acadien, that's it. The Acadien. This isn't an Acadien because it's not got the, it's not got the, the, the Diane front end. This will probably be an Azul or something like that. But again, most of the, most of these things understand. It's an import 7071. Look at that really, really kind of early style interior. And then we've got um, some pretty late. Ami here, the Ami Break, I think they called these. Um, this will probably be an Ami, an Ami Wheat, won't it? It'll probably be an Ami Wheat. Yeah, I've seen this before. It's actually a Super, actually an Ami Super, um, with the 10, 15cc engine that was uh, actually put into the 2CVs using Fiori's only. 
and it's probably appeared on a certain channel as well, so uh, no surprise there, viewers. Ooh, Talbot Matra Ranchos. Oh, there's actually two of them here. Excellent. This is a left-hand drive one. So it's sort of bits of Simca 1100 and sort of a bespoke rear end. So 1100 van and then, yeah, bespoke rear end on it. But it's actually what it is. It's, it's what we would call these days an SUV. Um, it doesn't have four-wheel drive or anything like that. Uh, this one, B sort of 81, 82. That's it, yeah. That's a 900 a cabin chassis. Uh, this one has V1.4 engine. Four speed gearbox from Talbot Alpine. It's amazing, isn't it? I can't remember if those rear lights were used on something else. I, don't, I, f I forget about that. If there's one of these, actually, it's a red one, like this one, used in the very first episode of Cat Size. Yeah, right hand drive one. Look at that. Someone's fitted different wheels to this one. Oh, I love this interior. That's, that's very, very nice. There we go, so this is an 83. I think the last year for them was about 84. So we're on the uh, Simca owner stand, but, but all the Simcas on here are Talbot, if that makes sense. They started life as Simcas, all three of these, apart from in Britain where this was a Chrysler. Um, this is a, a uh, local, local car. So it's, a, it's a local car, it's on a VC. I don't know if this is owned by uh, Peugeot Talbot. It's found in Dudley. I mean, done one previous owner from you. It's a very rare car. It's a 1.6 um, blue tweed trim and a five-speed gearbox. In fact, that gear lever is off the Peugeot 205, isn't it? So quite a late one. It's not a very, very late one. The later ones had, you know, interesting trim names. Um, very clearly a Series Two. Look at that. That'll be the uh, place that presumably. Um, Sort of resold it, it's a Datsun sticker. It's just amazing, it's absolutely incredible. Oh, someone's even left a window open for me. I do like this fuse very much. It's got a rev counter, uh, it's not the top spec because that would have had electric window. This doesn't have electric windows. And then this thing I saw at Festival like Exceptional earlier this year it's a Talbot van, I forget the name of it. So they were badged so as a Simcas, sometimes. Uh, Dodges, Talbots, all that kind of stuff. I think this is probably the last one of these left in this country. But yeah, about an 83, 84. Very, very simple, vinyl interior. That'll PBO 1100 dash in there. 1100 was launched in, I think, 1967. So but by the time this thing was made, it's a very, very old design. But absolutely unique. I, think. I don't think there are any, any of these left in the country apart from this one. There's a Solara here, this is a Solara Rapier. As I said, right at the end, the Alpine and the Solara, uh, they adopted the trim names from earlier route models, rather than replacing it, calling it the Talbot Rapier, it was a Talbot Solara Rapier. Um, it's a very late one. Nice and sort of two-tone, but at this stage, they were wanting to take the Talbot name off cars, and really, the replacement of this one was the uh, Peugeot 405, eventually. And the uh, Horizon was replaced by the Talbot Arizona, also known as the Peugeot 309. Um, yeah, Peugeot 205 gear levers. It's got electric windows in it. Yeah, it has all the mod cons. It's even got, I think that's a trip computer in there. So they were quite highly specified, these um, final versions. I would like to have a go on one of these views and see if that Poissy engine really can be silent or if they're all really noisy. So this is the uh, Renault Classic Car Club stand. And uh, this is a Renault, I think it's a 7. This was built in Spain only. Um, before the five-door version of the five was launched, I think around 1979, 1980, something like that. Yeah, there we go, Renault Siete, um, only made in Spain. There we go. <laughs> I've never seen one before. I've, I know about these, but I've never seen one before. Obviously, unless you lived in Spain, you wouldn't see them. Um, 76, 77 registration, but yeah, this is before the uh, Renault 5 had its five-door version and they decided to 
to make their own because saloon cars are more popular in Spain than the hatchbacks, clearly. So, talking of Renault 5 here is another one. Oh, look, it's Mr. Mark Parr from Mark and Motoring. Uh, good morning, sir. I see you've been having a look at the uh, Siete, the, the Siete. Spanish Renault yes. 7. That's right, sir. I've, I've read about them, I've never seen one. Yes, me either. But there's something even more exciting. Have you seen what we've got over here? It's a very early five. Very, very early five. Has this got the, has this got, yeah. This is the way that Michel Bouet wanted it, wasn't it? This is the way that he made, designed it. Sadly, he, he died, the designer of the five, Michel Bouet, before the car went into production. And he did it sort of in his spare time, I think. But amazing for 72, this is a really, really early one. Um, on an L, be one of the very first, actually, to be imported into this country. Um, with that uh, sort of uh, gear lever, very similar to Renault 4, to the TL, uh, the condition of this is just amazing. It's still got the, the raised um, number plate as well. A bit of a contrast here, a much later one. This is a um, Renault 5 Turbo 2. This would have been towards the end of the, the, the first generation 5's production, around 84, 85. Very, very, very sort of mean looking thing, and I think the engine this is in the rear, uh, from memory. 1989 to 90, uh, Super 5, based on the same platform as V9 and V11, so not the same uh, um, layout as the original 5 at all, actually. This is the um, 1.4 Prima automatic. I have actually driven a Renault 5 with this engine. I drove it on no budget reviews about two years ago. And uh, they are a lot of fun. It's a very, very sort of soft car in terms of the suspension. Um, but, you know, because I have French family, we, you know, it's the sort of thing that uh, the French branch of family used to have back in the day. And then a GT Turbo as well, of course. Of course, there's a GT Turbo here too. Um, this is, would be a later one. I think they had a power increase at one point, but still using that older Cleon font engine right the way to the to the end. Um, very nice, a typical kind of late 80s, early 90s colour with the uh, decals on the side as well. And then here's, um, here's a later one, I think this would be, uh, this would be a Campus, won't it? So it would be like the one I drove, yeah, it is a, this would be a 5 Campus. Um, campus Prima, of course, got you through like a rear wiper, but those are the original wheel trims for it. So this is very similar to the one I drove. Well, it was a white one, the one I drove, also on an L. So 93, 94. They kept this in production because the, the Twingo couldn't be engineered for right-hand drive. And so they just kept this in production in Slovenia for, uh, for markets such as, such as Britain. And it remains quite a successful car. So thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching uh, part one of the site Shambolic Shuffle around the 2022 Classic Motor Shirt VNEC, sponsored by Langas Insurance. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for many, many, many more parts. Like this video, leave a comment below, and uh, we shall see you again very soon.